you have sound? There it is. Hey, John, how's it going? Yeah, it's going okay. Way, way better than earlier in the week. <laughs> we can now mostly breathe without choking to death. Oh, so you must be in California. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we were where I'm at. We were over 400 in the air quality nastiness index. Ouch. And so are you Bay Area or down south? Yeah, I'm in the Bay Area. Okay. Are you, are you like physically anywhere near the fires or is it just the smoke that's getting to you? Um, I'm, I'm really close to Mount Pablo. So yeah, there were some of the fires here, but they were relatively, you know, they weren't the huge ones. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, we're, the way the air patterns have been, it'll settle in and then everything just fills up. So it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. not good. Yeah. Hey, Marius. Hi. But John, I'm, I'm right though that um, the fires were all started because of uh, lightning, right? It's not like the normal brush fires or someone being careless with a match or something, right? No, it was hours of, uh, of lightning, which we, we got, uh, what, two, two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we, we don't get in California, you know, we don't get that kind of lightning storm in California very often, so. Yeah, because it's weird, because it's like out here in North Carolina, you know, we, we get, you know, lightning storms and stuff, it's always accompanied by rain. So the idea that a lightning strike can cause a fire from, it is just kind of weird. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Hey, Clemens. Hello. And hey, Tommy. Yo. Yo. <laughs> we have a very short agenda today. So. That's great. Yeah, I wouldn't mind eating lunch, to be honest. So, yeah. For, for a change. Yeah, I don't like waiting until 2 p.m. Eastern to eat lunch. It's not fun. I get really grumpy then. Hey, David. Oh, good morning. If I could type your name right. And Ray. Hello. Hello. Da -da -da -da. Let's see. Eric, you there? Hello, Doug. Hello. And Ginger? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Doug. Hello. Good morning. Uh, Klaus? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Doug. Hello. Uh, I'm Scott? Doug, 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 Doug. Hey. I wasn't sure if you're going to bail out of the TOC call or not. I assume they're still going. Yeah. All right, whoops, Ryan, are you there? Yes. Hello. So just a heads up. Uh, it's very possible that next Thursday I may not be able to make the first 30 minutes of the call. And so Mark will be running it so you get to enjoy, enjoy him for a change. Hmm.
Morning, Lance. Hello. Hello. Well, since everybody's so early, maybe we should start at two after instead of three. Doo -doo -doo. Hi, Brian. Hello, Doug. Hi, Sam. Sam, are you there? What about Christoph? Hi, how are you? Hello, good. All right, Nick, are you there? Hey, Doug. Hello. All right. Do, do, do. Anybody have any exciting plans for the weekend while we're waiting? I haven't thought about the coming weekend yet, I have to say. Mm. It's far away. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those we The air is getting better in Colorado, so I'm going to go outside. I assume that you're getting California air? We had our own wildfires as well. Oh, did you? Oh, that's not good. Ew. Okay. Did it do? Did I miss it? I feel like somebody joined and I'm missing them. Bum, 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 bum. I guess not. Okay, tell you what, let's get started. <clears throat> it's actually last chance. Sam, are you there? Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Okay, community time. Uh, anything from the community that people want to bring up that's not on the agenda? All right, KubeCon North America, still looking for volunteers. Uh, just a nagging reminder. <clears throat> okay, SDK. Um, we had one call last week. I can't remember for sure what we talked about. Anybody from the SDK team want to mention anything for the group to think about or to know about? Okay, not hearing anything. Uh, we do have a call right after this one to talk about the interop discovery stuff. I don't think anything's really changed in the doc since last week, but we can talk about it. Um, since I don't think we've actually had a formal discussion on the doc yet. So we'll do that right after this call. Um, I don't see TMR, so nothing from the workflow group. So, okay, before we jump into the one PR that we have, is there anything on the agenda people would like to bring up before we get to PRs? All right, in that case, Scott, would you like to talk us through this pull request you have? Sure, this is the, the result of the discussion from last week around dropping the types endpoint and then uh, the other change, uh, it was it was Klaus had an interesting idea to change types inside of services to events, which then allows uh, to remove the stutter inside of the type object from, did I miss one? Oh yeah, oh no, we changed it back. So instead of, uh, so it used to be types and type, which is weird because it's the type of the type instead of uh, now what it could be is it's this list of events and the event has a type, which makes sense again and doesn't stutter. So uh, I think this was pretty good compromise. And so here's the PR. Okay. Uh, just making sure there's nothing else. Nope, I, th I think that was it. There was one question. Um, oh yeah, you would remove this section or this, uh, um, what's it called, uh, use case. Yeah, um, I removed an endpoint that implemented that, that uh, question right. or that answer to the question. Okay, and there's one little typo you can put aside from that. Any questions or comments for Scott? In particular, Klaus, did you, is there anything you'd like to add? No. Um, 
so maybe the the second use case was about getting a list of all available types so for me the most important part is um if i already know a type where can i get it or yeah from which services do i get it so it's not exactly that use case that was listed here maybe okay yeah i think that use case gets uh reintroduced when we add the uh the the higher fidelity searching yes I would agree. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this one then? And thank you, Scott, for doing this. No concerns, no questions? Any objection to approving then? Cool, all right. Thank you, Scott. I think that's actually gonna really clean things up quite a bit, so that's really good, thank you. Okay, um, I know Jim has started to work on his protobuf stuff, but unfortunately he can't make the call this week. Um, but I th he actually may be looking to do a dedicated phone call. Um, just let you guys know that uh, that may be coming up. And that's actually it for our entire agenda today. Um, is there well, anything else people would like to bring up? I'm Brian, did, are you trying to say something? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious where that call will get advertised so I don't accidentally miss it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, you can assume that uh, at least the Slack channel, um, but I'll also try to make sure he sends out a note to the mailing list. That's awesome. Thank you. Yep. And it, it may not happen. It was just, a, a, I think, a thought that he had. Okay, uh, Lance, your hands up. Um, yeah, we don't need to discuss it here unless people really want to, but I, I posed a question in the Cloud Events Slack channel and I appreciate some feedback if anyone uh, is interested in that. Um, what is the topic? Yeah, did Tinder have any other uh, topics? You want to just quickly mention what it is? Okay, yeah. Um, in the JavaScript SDK, uh, we are currently pretty strict about validating events. And in fact, you can't create an invalid event if you try to it throws an exception in the constructor. Um, we're looking at having a Boolean value um, uh, as a parameter to the constructor that tells it to be you know, strict or loose. And there's some debate over whether or not it would mo make the most sense from the SDK perspective to have the default be strict or the default be loose validate or no validation basically. Oh. And I'm just curious what other SDKs are doing. What are you? What are you? Uh, um, what are you validating? What's so? Are, are you validating whether all the fields are, have the right types? We're validating everything that we can uh, per the spec. So basically, all of the required fields are there, uh, and whether or not the types for the refer the required fields are correct, uh, whether or not the names for the extensions conform to the specification, whether or not the values for the extensions conform to the specification. So, but but you can add whatever you like in terms of extra extensions. You can add whatever you like in terms of what? I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, and you can add extra extra fields per the extension model. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Well, then then I think what you're doing there is to ensure that you have a valid cloud event. And I think the the other most of the other SDKs are solving that by ways of using the languages. Uh, type model. And I think in JavaScript, you're in the place where um, you are dealing with a bit of a weaker type model. Um, so I don't think it's wrong to go and, and, and do strict validation. But I would do that as the, as the default. Yeah, the, the type um, if you're using TypeScript, um, that actually does help some of that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, With the wild west of typing in, in JavaScript as it is, um, I think it's, it's, it's good hygiene to go and make sure that um, um, what, what you're composing is a, a valid cloud event and not just some, something that looks like it. Right, I, I, I tend to agree. I guess my concern, um, is that, uh, you know, when I think about friction that developers might have when they first pick this stuff up, um, they may not realize that the default is strict and uh, they may, you know, malform an event 
and uh, throw it to the SDK and, you know, like get really that, frustrated. Well, yeah, but that's okay. It's okay for them to be frustrated because the point of this whole, whole exercise that we're doing here is interoperability. So allowing them to create effectively garbage on the wire is um, not the point of why we're doing this. Right. Well, I mean, we would still have a validate capability, right? You would still be able to validate the function. I mean, validate the event. Um, and I think it also, um, I, I hear you. I'm just going to play the devil's advocate a little bit. Um, uh, it, uh, in a scenario where you're just receiving events um, and you don't know exactly where those events are coming from or what the what systems are generating those events, that those systems could be generating events that don't conform to the specification. Should it be that you <clears throat> are, um, you know, just by default going to throw an exception every time you try to receive one of those events over, let's say, HTTP? So there, there I use, uh, there I follow the, 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 uh, the smart eternal guidance of Sam Ruby and say, um, be lenient in what you accept, be strict in what you send, uh, which means if you're parsing in, in cloud event, then you should do the best you can to go and make, make sure that you can fit that into your data structure. Uh, but if you're creating a cloud event, then that cloud event should be precise uh, as it goes on the wire. So receiving, so with receiving, when you're just parsing something that comes off the wire, I think there's, um, you can be a little bit more flexible. And in the JavaScript world, for instance, um, there is, uh, like if you parse a date, for instance, there's obviously smart libraries that go, can, do, can go and, and take multiple formats. And maybe you, you don't want to have, uh, you don't want to Im impose that the time zone uh, offset, et cetera. Is, I mean, there's all kinds, of, all kinds of weird things that people can do. So not necessarily reject an event that you can go and interpret, but I would be very strict in things that are going out. Okay, yeah, Scott, your hands up. We we talked about this, but um, in an SDK call several months ago for the Go SDK because uh, in Go it's you can you can have a direct access to the struct similar to how JavaScript works, and so uh, in Go you you can construct an invalid cloud event up, but um, uh, so there's there's a couple layers. The the client layer won't send won't it won't send an invalid cloud event. It it calls a validation method. It double checks all the fields. It double checks all the extension names. It double checks that everything can turn into a string the correct way, and etc. Uh, at the at the binding layer, we don't do that validation because it's uh, it's low level plumbing. And so you you could work around the the SDK and send garbage on the wire if you really wanted to, but the event knows it's bad and uh, it it I don't know what will happen exactly uh, for for certain cases where missing required fields are there. Hmm. <clears throat> um, okay, that's interesting. I mean, so uh, you know, receiving a cloud event in the JavaScript SDK is just calling the cloud event constructor, and so from what I'm hearing, it seems like receiving an event. It should be loose. Maybe when you're actually just creating an event, um, uh, you know, raw or whatever, um, it should be strict. Or another option would be to have it uh, be sort of loose or no validation upon creation. But if you wanted to transform the event into a message to send uh, over yeah. the wire, at that transformation point, it would be validated. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, right. that's what we're doing. Uh, just because, like, there are cases where uh, somebody wants to make a factory of, of cloud events and they, they construct an archetype and then they mutate the, some inner data. But like, you know, technically it's not valid to have a cloud event that doesn't have an ID, but uh, there's some magic in the cloud of the Golang SDK that will um, on its way through the client, if the ID is empty, it'll generate a UUID for you and, and decorate that and send it out. Um, for marshalling JSON back into a cloud event, it'll try its best if it finds JSON. Um, 
that thing could end up not being a valid cloud event. You get back a thing, it, it's populated with everything we know about because of JSON, uh, but then you can call validate on it and it'll return you back all the reasons why it's broken. Right. Okay. Any other comments for Lance? All right. Thank you, Lance. Thanks, everyone. Yep. All right. Any other topics people want to bring up? Sanjay, did you want to mention something about your query thing or take that offline? I was just checking last time uh, we were talking about that like clause and I had posted something on the chat, but I don't know if that was lost. It was uh, referring to something uh, from GraphQL. And uh, I, I don't know if we closed that issue. Um, no, I don't think we closed any issues. I did grab some of the comments from, where was it? Was it this one? I thought, there, I thought, yeah, so I did grab some of the comments from last week. I may have missed yours. Could you add your comment then to 686? Yeah, yeah I will do that. Okay, okay thank you. Let me paste a link into the chat. That way you can add it there since that seems to be where the discussion is happening. Okay. Any other topics then? Okay, so um, I guess the, the general comment I, I should probably make is please look through obviously the, the specs um, if, you, if you want to open up PRs against them because we need things to work on obviously next week's call. But in particular, look at the open issues for discovery more than anything else. We have quite a few open and they're obviously then begging PRs to be written against those. So please, if you have time to work on those, because if we don't get new PRs, it's going to be another quick phone call. And uh, we want to keep making forward progress. Yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Cummins. <laughs> At least fake listening to me. I appreciate that. Actually, I guess one other thing. Um, so Brian, you said that, that last week and this week, the aspect ratio on my screen looks kind of funky. Now, I did join through another computer. It looks okay to me. Is anybody else seeing like a squished version of my shared screen or is it just Brian? I have issues. Is it very funky? So what, what do I need to do to fix that? Do I need to make it bigger like, like this or what, 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 what would fix it? Yeah, that looks that way better. Fix that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is better. Interesting. Okay. I think they have uh, um, expand to meet their window instead of show the native uh, aspect ratio of your screen. Uh, so I tried it both ways and it looked squished both ways for me in the view options. Huh. Well, there's Zoom has several view options. There's the hostile takeover of your computer mode. <laughs> <laughs> so where are these options? I'm trying to see whether uh... Uh, it's not under a view options up by where your uh, top header is, but if you're sharing, you might you might not be able to see it. Depending yeah, on where I, is. I'm looking at my other computer. I see on my other computer. I see choose. Oh, maybe you think it's me again. Maybe it's not a good choice. So, we, Scott, are you saying that this is a user error on Brian's part, or or something yeah. I should be doing on my side? <laughs> Their side on the client because it looks fine over here, although it's not as good as when Clemens shares. <sighs> Yes, I know. He has a spectacular monitor. Yes. <laughs> I've got two view options here, fit to window and original size, and both of them looked squished before you made your window wider, Doug. Okay. Well, it seems Maybe like... Maybe a web client problem? <laughs> okay. Well, either way, it sounds like I should make it bigger no matter what, because um, you're, you're happy with this size right here, right? Yeah, this looks great. Okay. It's just... A boatload of extra space on the left and right for me, but that's okay. I'll, I'll deal with it. Okay. All I right. Wonder whether, I wonder whether you, can, whether you can share all the monitors at once. All monitors. I don't know if I'd even, if I'd even want to do that. I could share the whole monitor. Actually, okay. Hold on a sec. Since we're obviously bored out of our minds here, hold on a sec. <laughs> if I do this. Well, I got stuff to do, Doug. What do you, what do you come on, man? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just just indulge me for one more second here, Scott. What does this look like to you, Brian? 
Uh, this also looks good, although now there's even more dead blue space off to the right. But. Correct, yes, because that's showing my whole screen. So yeah, I think I do that, but then it, the, the text is the same size, right? Or is the text not as squished yeah. anymore? It, it wasn't squished before. Yeah, the text is a lot smaller now for me. Is really? it? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's, now it's all super small. Now you have to change from, the zoom level of Google original. Docs. <laughs> Guys, forget this. You should all I'm use gonna Windows because you would not have those problems. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I'll, so, so Ginger, you said it was squished for you, or that the font was squished. What does this look like to you? It wasn't squished. It's just smaller. Interesting. So I like your original. It was never squished for me. It was perfectly fine for me. And like my view options, I have a whole bunch. I don't just have two. I have like fit to window 50 original size and then all the way up to 300. Yeah, this must just be a like web client deficiency in that case. Um, if this works best for most people, like this is perfectly readable for me. It just looks a little funny. So uh, I, I guess we stick with this in that case. Okay. <laughs> all right. Brian, Thank you. What, what browser are you using? I'm using Chrome. Okay. Okay, I don't want to upset Scott too much. So thank you for the diversion. <laughs> um, okay, before we let everybody go and we jump over to the uh, to the interrupt stuff, let me just do a couple of things. Uh, Hamid, are you there? I am here. Excellent. And what about Sam? I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Did I miss anybody for attendance? Oh, V A I B H A V. I yeah, apologize. I'm here. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else? Okay, in that case, if you have no interest in talking about the discovery interrupt stuff, you may go and have a good rest of your day. We'll give everybody about a minute or so to, to leave if they want, and then we'll get started. So thank you, everybody. Hey, sorry, Doug, the discovery interrupt stuff, is that specific to SDKs? No. Okay. Well, no. <laughs> No, it's just about interrupt testing the discovery, and I don't think any SDK is doing anything with discovery yet. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so um, I did put this document out there, I think, almost two weeks ago, but we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet on any phone call. Does anybody have any comments on this in terms of whether the overall direction seems to be okay so far or anything they want to change okay um obviously as i mentioned last time i do think we need to fill out more information here but is there enough for people to actually at least start coding against it are there particular things that we need to talk about now, or is it just a matter of people finding time to start coding and finding gaps? Uh, we have a similar effort on the subscription and the schema registry. Not yet. Because I, I, I think I am uh, personally super excited to see those, those things come together. Yeah, so am I. I um... Will this force it uh, to some extent, Scott? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, so like one example is the discovery API leverages the subscription API and the subscription API can leverage the, um, the registry to validate that, you know, the shape of events yeah. are, are correct. Correct. Yeah. So for, um, um, I really want us to, so on the Microsoft side to do work on this, uh, on the interop things. It's just that right now I don't get enough people around the table before Labor Day because it's, 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 right now everybody seems to be on vacation. Yeah. I was kind of assuming it was either people are overloaded or on vacation with the two. Well, yeah, it, it's both. Yeah. <laughs> How about we do this, Doug? Like, this scenario looks fine, but let's, let's look, like, let's think about um, introducing the other APIs into a, a holistic setup. So there's like, this is the MVP scenario. We're focusing on discovery. We should mix in subscription API. And then once that's working, we should add a consumer that validates that the producer actually is 
sending events that are in line with what the discovery API is doing, what it subscribed to and the shape from the schema registry or something. Okay. Sounds reasonable. Is that something you could add to the document? Yeah, I can, I can take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. But I'm, I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting a, an evolution of the scenario instead of a rewrite once we introduce all the other, the other APIs we're working on. Mm -hmm. well, sounds good to me. Anybody else want to chime in? Nacho. Hey folks, sorry to join late. Uh, so I basically added myself there as interested participant. Uh, I will definitely start looking at this more closely uh, on the Knative side, it's probably starting next week. And what I think Scott just mentioned of trying to tie these things together, like discovery with subscription with the schema registry, that's something that was on my mind. And I was starting to build a prototype using sort of the Knative primitives uh, and build these APIs on top of that. Uh, so I think we can make some progress on this and I'd be happy to help uh, as well. That'd be great. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Okay, so then I guess the next steps on this is, I guess, Scott, you're gonna make some modifications to the doc itself, but is there anything else we need to do other than just people need to find time to start coding this? I just wanna make sure that no one feels like they're blocked. My PR that got merged or uh, approved today, I have to make that typo correction that can merge and then we can code against that. Mm hmm Cool. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah, and thank you for reminding me. I won't I won't merge your PR until you do the typo. I completely forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I think I'm sorry, was someone else, Clemens? No, it's all good. Okay. In that case, I think we're done. Record yeah. time. All right. Yeah, that is okay. quite record time. Yep. Two, two okay. Calls. Thank you everybody. Bye. We'll talk Bye. again next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.